Uh, first, the copyright. Okay, so um, this map is a user-created map. Uh, it says uh, Project Owl Open Source Intelligence. Uh, Project Owl. I don't know what their if they have like you know a license Ula, but basically it, I'm not sure what the uh, what what license they're under. But basically, um, it basically. I, so whatever whatever the nuance legal nuance. Basically, just know it's it's not our map. It's a user created map that we're going off of for this uh, lecture. Um, so none of the uh, we are not endorsed by Project Owl, the open source intelligence community. We're not in, so endorsed by Project Owl. Okay, so I just want to be clear: not our property, not endorsed. Anything we say is on our on our own ass. So with that being said, let's begin our own ass part. What a fucking mess! What an absolute fucking mess! Um, well, you can uh, you can see the uh, well. It's it's uh, it, this 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 bunk has been humped. Look, you have all these different units here. Um, it's a complete mess. Once. Uh, that this is better than anything we can come up with. That that shows the different um, different brigades, artillery, and all the different. Yeah, basically what what you what you see is sort of uh, what you get. Um, but so the uh, so this is just uh, amazing. Um, but the main point, what we want to say is, we were going to get wax political. Then then we're looking at this military map, and it's. You know, you know what? Stop, stop looking at this. Stop looking at this. You know, goddamn map and all. So let's. So let's get back to the points here. Um, there's two. There's multiple different dimensions. If you can't hold multiple velocities in your head, and no, the Earth isn't flat. We're gonna get to that. How people are. I believe that certain YouTubers are. I believe that certain flat Earth YouTubers are extrapolating. They basically they are measuring flat baseline, but that save that for a different topic. Save the save the save the flat baseline for a different topic, <coughs> but basically, you, you have to hold velocities in your mind. Velocity of the Earth, call that v1. Velocity, velocity, or velocity of the Earth rotation. Velocity of the Earth's uh, orbit around the Sun. Velocity of the solar system uh, as it travels through the Milky Way. Velocity. Of the Milky Way itself within the larger cluster of galaxies and the velocity, if you can even call it that, the movement of the galaxy. So there's mo the point of the multiple velocities. You can't focus on V1. Um, what is V1? Nitty gritty military science. Some some ROTC trainee is at night. He's in the bitter cold, straining on his map and compass. He's taken a bearing. He's under strain. To show that he can successfully, uh, you know, lead his unit through, you know, territory based on his navigational skills. That is nitty gritty technical. You know, that's just you know grunt work. Okay, uh, there is a political dynamic, and we were before CNN and Fox News and others waxed, you know, poetic about what's happening in Ukraine. We were talking about it on YouTube, and we got a lot of flack about that. We're so, and the whole time we were saying we're not trying to advocate. For Ukraine or Russia, we're just trying to look at it as cold clinical psychopath and state, point to a horse and call it a horse and not call it a deer. Just state the facts without any morality. So there's a there's a political dimension. There's a political dimension that it, all the way from the high level politics boiling down to the nitty gritty of what's happening down to the to the brigades, to the, to the, you know, to the units, um, at, a, at the nitty gritty level. But what we wanted to say, um, on the higher level politics element is that there's this idea, we read in news that basically you have, uh, there were some Taiwanese, they were waxing idealistic about Ukraine and Taiwan being hand in hand. No. Uh, what happens to Taiwan? If Taiwan is taken over by China, that has nothing to do with the likes of Ukraine. That is apples and oranges. So this idea that you have Taiwanese are going to go to Ukraine because defending Ukraine is defending Taiwan, that is not logically consistent. They are complete apples and oranges that have absolutely nothing to do with the other. So... If if the Taiwanese, if they're, I'm not advocating bloodthirsty, you know, bloodlust, warmongering lunatics like me. 
but okay, if if some Taiwanese is a is a DSM five, you know, clinical if, if some type of yeah, forget DSM, some type of clinical psychopath like me, uh, they're no, they're not a victim, um, you know, basically. But but if they have this idea that they're 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 fighting for democracy in Ukraine to defend Taiwan's democracy at home, this is complete total nonsense. If you're if if they are a bloodthirsty warmongering psychopath, if they fall, I don't think they're a victim. You might in my victim in my book, you're not a victim. But if if you're an idealistic cadet that thinks you're fighting for freedom and democracy and Ukrainian freedom, I think I think you're a I think you're a bloody victim. I think you're a bloody self-made victim. And I, so I don't want to see I don't want to see my Taiwanese boys being sent into basically some meat grinder. Okay. So, if you're a warmongering, bloodthirsty lunatic, I don't. I don't think you're a victim. I'm not gonna. I'm not. You know, I'm personally not gonna be try to try to try to talk the the, the, the psychopath down, um, because so it doesn't matter. Even if you're, you're you're in uniform, just just the other couple days ago, I, I was listening. Basically, I didn't mean to overhear, but it was in a public area. It was a you know basically American airmen were. Or soldier, basically, I thought they were having a girlfriend boyfriend argument. Basically, the whole thing was about career. Who's putting a recommendation? Who's you know trying to get that you know you know posting? Basically, you know you know which staff sergeant, commanding officer, uh, you know which base man. Let's let's if they were if this was a war situation and they're talking out loud like that, where I can hear them from 50 feet away about their career ambitions in the American military, uh, you can easily give give away intel to a foreign intelligence officer. So watch what you say out loud if, if you're in a war. But basically, the, um, yeah, the U.S. service member, no, just because you wear a uniform doesn't, you, they, you, well, I, I don't want to give, uh, it's completely anonymized, but it's all about, basically, basically they're a government employee. Talking about, you know, who's staff sergeant so-and-so, you know, commanding officer so-and-so, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm angling for this, I'm angling for this, and this is this is it's it's just a government job. Okay, maybe veterans they come along and, you know, that's glorious. But basically, within within 50 foot earshot, they're they're not warmongering psychopaths. Uh, you know, in you know that's that's hired guns by Putin. They're they're just angling for careers in the U.S. military, dude. So, um, so the whole point of that is not to demean, uh, you know, military as a career. But I'm just what what I mean to what I mean to say is that. To separate the idealists, the two victims, the idealists and the, the careerists as it relates to Russia and Ukraine. There are poor boys. Hope I'm I'm hopeful that the Nepal government has put an end to this bullshit. Where uh where the poor boys, no money, they have they have a wife. How do you have a wife and two kids when you don't have money in the first place? But they're not going there because they're warmongers. They are not bloodthirsty warmongers. They're doing it for one reason because they don't have money. So, and I and I and I think don't think it's just Nepal. So if it's if it's if you have a impoverished community in America, they join the U.S. service. Uh, you know, doesn't matter which branch. They're not necessarily warmongers. Okay, they're just they're just they're trying to feed their family. Okay, I'm not trying to demean making military into a job, job as a military, military as a job. But they're not warmongers, and frankly, a lot of them don't want to be anywhere near some bloody meat grinder where they're going to be maimed, injured, possibly tortured in violation of international humanitarian law, which we are, you know, self-proclaimed experts at, well, not self-proclaimed, we actually, we took courses and training in that, but we don't believe in credentialism. Anyone can learn international humanitarian law, just, just use your mind. Uh, but basically, um, but what we want to say is, again, the main thing is that it is complete ludicrous when you have these idealistic middle class, if you have idealistic Taiwanese boys and they think to defend Ukraine is to defend Taiwan. That is obliterated, complete nonsense. If you're a warmongering, clinical, deranged, mentally messed up psychopath, as I am, and you fall here, I don't consider you a victim, but if you have, listen, Taiwanese boy, if you have this idea, you want to go here because you want to save Taiwan's democracy. If Taiwan, if Ukraine falls, Taiwan, Taiwan is next. You're, you're out. That you're out of your mind, homeboy. 
don't do it. If you're a lunatic, okay, I don't, I'm not going to nanny state you. But if you're an idealistic child cadet that, that has this democracy ideal, that's where I nanny state your ass.